no matter who we are, regardless of where we've been or what has happened to us along the way, at each and every moment, God reaches out to us with arms wide open in welcome and says, Ah, here you are. I've been waiting for you and I'm overjoyed that you've been able to come. And so it is that today, as we come to worship and pray, we are held steadfastly in God's own open, warm arms. From time beyond our understanding, through their law, customs, care and nurture, the First Peoples breathed life into this vast land. We pay our respects to the elders and leaders, past and present, and seek God's blessing on those who continue to work for the truth, for healing and reconciliation for all. On behalf of our minister, Bob Hutchinson, and those presenting this service, we extend a very warm welcome to those who will be viewing this service at another time. We join in singing, Morning Has Broken, Living water, living water poured out for those and all of us to remember our own baptism in time. The Bible. In this is the word of our Lord. In lighting this candle, we acknowledge the presence of the Christ, light of the world, light of our world, in whose presence we gather to worship, to be in the midst of others, and to bring our whole selves to the Lord. Let us be still for a few moments and co-create a space for more gratitude, greater compassion, sensitive understanding, soft human emotions and honesty. Gratitude to be alive and to make choices to give and receive with love and compassion. Understanding so we may build bridges and seek creative solutions. Emotions to be approachable and real. Honesty and integrity to take thoroughly into account all perspectives. We gather, all people, distance yet connected, all people, varied but one. Together we seek a balance between individual needs and communal possibilities. In these moments and beyond, amen. And we will now sing, Come and Fill Our Hearts.
Let's join together in a moment of prayer. Please let us pray. Gracious God, we confess that we have transgressed against you in thought, word and deed. You have given us love, but we have returned apathy. You have provided us with neighbours, yet we have become self-centred. You have given us a world to enjoy, but we have spoilt our home. Forgive us, we pray, for the wrong things that we've done, for the good things that we've failed to do. Give us time to change with the desire and the will to do so. Amen. And we hear these words of assurance this morning. That when we are empty, God fills us. When we are disheartened, God is compassionate. When we are wounded, God brings healing. When we confess our failing, God forgives. In Christ, through Christ, and because of Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. And will you join together with me in the Lord's Prayer, which will be on the screen. O God of all and in all, hallowed be your name. May your way of love come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For you reign in the glory and the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. Today we have two readings. The first reading comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verses 40 to 42. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me, and anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones who is my disciple, truly I tell you, that person will certainly not lose their reward. The second part of the reading comes from the book of Psalm, chapter 40. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, who does not look to the proud, to those who turn aside to false gods. Many, Lord of my God, are the wonders you have done, the things you planned for us. None can compare with you. Were I to speak and tell of your deeds, there would be too many to declare. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but my ears you have opened. Burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not require. Then I said, Here I am, I have come. It is written about me in the scroll. I desire to do your will, my God. Your law is within my heart. I proclaim your saving acts in the great assembly. I do not seal my lips, Lord, as you know. I do not hide your righteousness in my heart. I speak of your faithfulness and your saving help. I do not conceal your love and your faithfulness from the great assembly. Do not withhold your mercy from me, Lord. May your love and faithfulness always protect me. 
For troubles without numbers around me, my sins have overtaken me, and I cannot see. They are more than the hairs of my head, and my heart fails within me. Be pleased to save me, Lord. Come quickly, Lord, to help me. May all who want to take my life be put to shame and confusion. May all who desire my ruin be turned back in disgrace. May those who say to me, "Aha, aha," be appalled at their own shame. But may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who long for your saving help always say, "The Lord is great." But as for me, I am poor and needy. May the Lord think of me. You are my help and my deliverer. You are my God. Do not delay. In this is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. The number forty in the Bible is symbolic of a period of testing. Just as Noah's faith was put to the test in the forty days of rain, as the children of Israel were tested in the wilderness for forty years. And Jesus in the desert, being tempted for forty days. Lent lasts for forty days, where we give up something or take up something in prayerful reflection. Even today's gospel that Jean read to us from Matthew's gospel starts in chapter ten at verse forty. Rick Warren wrote a book, a devotional book called Forty Days of Purpose." And apparently, the year 40 A.D. was a leap year. Then there's the World Vision 40-hour famine, and we say we catch 40 winks when we have a nap in the afternoon, and we listen to the top 40 countdown on the radio of the songs. Psalm 40 happens to be one of my favourite psalms, and I'll explain that in a little bit later. Then there is the can of WD 40. Which you spray on things to make lubricant or stop them squeaking, and of course, forty is the natural number to follow thirty-nine and to precede forty-one. And three years ago, the United Church celebrated forty years. Now I've turned forty, and a few more, as most of you have, and there are some though that、uh, are. Celebrating or getting close to, or have celebrated, two forties. But what is after forty? Life begins at forty, we say. And it was the German philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer who started this off by saying, "The first forty years of life give us the text. The next thirty supply the commentary." I reflected on this, and I found a writer who was talking about her 40th birthday, and getting older, and feeling the aches and pains, and the sports injuries, and and thinking as 40 approaches, she asks, "What will happen next?" And it's a good question for us in the church and individual members of the body of Christ to ask the question: Life after 40? The writer goes on and says about her party. The party ended up a bit of a blur. At the end of the night, I I wearily slumped into bed. When I woke up the next morning, nothing was different and nothing had changed, apart from a huge sense of relief that I'd finally turned forty. And after all the build-up, after all the expectations of change and growing old, it had finally happened, and I was left to wonder, what happens now? She then goes on to reflect about the Uniting Church. The church has journeyed for forty years. She says we've made mistakes, we've learnt valuable lessons, and certainly we've been tested. What is life on the other side of forty going to look like for us? Now is our chance to seize the opportunities that turning forty provides. It's our time, she says, as a church, to reflect on our past experiences. And venture towards that new place, that fertile land, the place that bears new fruit, 
Let us not be, not be fearful about the lead up to this birthday, but wait in enthusiastic anticipation of what life might present to us once we've celebrated this significant milestone. And so I turn to the Bible, inspired by this number 40, and I flicked over to Psalm 40, because it's one of my favourite, as I said, because the best rock group band in the world, the Irish group U2, they wrote a song called 40, which is based on this psalm. The Edge, the name of U2's lead guitarist, says this of the origin of the song 40. So when we had this slightly unusual piece of music, we said, okay, what are we going to do with it? Bono, the front man, lead singer, said, let's do a psalm. So we opened up the Bible and found Psalm 40. This is it. Let's do it. And within 40 minutes, we had worked out the last few elements of the tune. Bono had sung it, and we mixed it. And literally, after finishing the mix, we walked out through the door, and the next band walked in. So, inspired by you too in Psalm 40, I bring you a reflection today on life after 40. I don't want to take this, verse, this psalm out of context, but... I simply use it as an offering to, to reflect today upon life after 40, as looking at the past and the present and the future. Psalm 40 begins with, a, I waited patiently for the Lord. And the first three verses of this psalm are past tense. I waited, he inclined, heard, drew me up, set, put a new song in my mouth. We can look back and note where God has been active and has led and provided and sustained and even motivated and even challenged. It's easy to look back into history and say, yeah, we did a good job. Or yeah, we made some mistakes along the way and we got it wrong. This psalm is also a prayer or a prayer song about a past trouble. The writer was either literally in the pit or symbolically, in a miry bog, in a, in a sticky place, but was rescued and then his feet were set firm upon a rock. Verse 4 and 5 reflect life in the present tense, life now, a song, again, a prayer of thanks and praise, a recognition that life does go on. We don't sit in the past, or at least we shouldn't. We learn from the past and we grow, but we don't stay there. And this is perhaps the central understanding of the base of union of the Uniting Church. That as a church or as a people, we are a pilgrim people always on the way. On the way. Life after 40 Life in witness and praise and service to the God who calls us forth into new beginnings, into resurrection life. Or in the words of Jesus, life in all its fullness. Then verse 6 to 8 asks a very important question. What is the future? What is after 40 all about? What happens now? These verses in Psalm 40, verse 6 to 8, echo, I think, very closely that other great Hebrew text in the Bible from prophet Micah, chapter 6, also verse 6 to 8. Sacrifice and offerings you do not desire, but you have given me an open ear. Burnt offerings and sin offering you have not required. Then I said, here I am. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. I delight to do your will, O my God. Your law is within my heart. And then we turn to the prophet Micah. Micah chapter 6, also verse 6 to 8, ironically. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? 
So I come before God with burnt offerings, with calves a year old. Will the Lord be pleased with a thousand rams, ten thousand rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, for the fruit of my body, for the sin of my soul? Has he told you, O mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you? but to do justice and to love mercy or kindness and to walk humbly with your God. So here's the call. That we don't get caught up in arguments and battles about our religion and our styles of worship or denominations, but to have an open ear and a heart for God, for the gospel. As the prophet Micah encourages us, and pleads with us to do justice, to act and to work and to make it happen, to love kindness or mercy, the heart of God, God love, the heart for the other, the neighbour, and to walk humbly, worship and devotion, prayer and commune. What that looks like in the future is unknown. It's got to start and continue, though, with an open ear and a humble heart in response to the grace and the love of the triune God. We don't know what's going to happen in the next four minutes, let alone the next 40 hours or 40 days or months or 40 years. I don't think the future is so much about growing numbers in the church or planting new churches, for I think that will take care of itself in the future. After all, the church is not our church, but it is Jesus' church. Our future response, our life after 40, is being faithful. It's being faithful to the call of Christ and to be witnesses to the good news of Jesus, the call to love practically, to be agents of justice and peace, love, reconciliation and a welcoming community. To maintain faith and to grow in understanding and kindness and continue in worship, witness and work for justice, kindness, hope, here, beyond, wherever we are. So what happens now? What happens now as we continue to walk in the Spirit of God, leading us as the gathered and dispersed people, fed and sustained in worship, in the sacraments, in hospitality, and we are called and sent out to be the people of God where God calls us. The church buildings might still be closed, but the church as the people of God is alive and well away from the buildings. And so the final word comes from the writer of Psalm 40 who sings and declares, But many who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Those who love your salvation say continually, Great is the Lord. As for me, I am poor and needy, but the Lord takes thought for me. You are my help and my deliverer, O God. Do not delay. Amen. And with those words resonating in our our minds and hearts, I invite us to sing the song, Choose Kindness.
gracious God, we give thanks for the beautiful world in which we live and all you richly provide. You have given us riches beyond measure. You have given us more than one person could ask. Lord, bless the gifts that we have freely given today that they may be used for the work in this place and lighten the load of the others whose burden is great. Amen. God of love and grace, you have led and sustained us in our journey over the centuries and as the Uniting Church in Australia for the past 43 years. We give thanks for the men and women who have been the true servant-hearted leaders on this journey and for those who have nurtured and encouraged the church as we have faithfully sought to live out our lives as loyal followers of Jesus. Faithful God, full of compassion, you have promised to be near us and to listen to our prayers for ourselves and others. And so we pray for your world, torn by hatred and division, broken by poverty and disease. In these troubled times, we pray for the communities in which we live, for our families, our friends, and all whom we love. We provide Pray for those who fight suffering, handicap and disease, for the forgotten and undervalued peoples of our society. O oh God, forgive our failure to act justly, to love with mercy and to walk humbly with you. When as church we have caused others hurt or to stumble, forgive us and lift them up in your love. God of abundant life, we pray that as a fellowship of reconciliation, we might more fully reflect the beauty of your creation. We pray, loving God, that you put into the hearts of we, your pilgrim people, your passion for unity, we who share in Christ's unfinished mission, the reconciliation and renewal of the whole creation. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord's face be turned towards you and give you peace. Amen.
Christ be with you. Christ within you. Christ be. The Lord met the lift of his face, and the goodness of his heart to be brecht upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Niech się Pan błogosławi i strzeże. Paka se lumineze faca lui peste Jehoneka. Jehova, pirumokam nindemelu yarti, nenekasamad. Kosi fuini alafia.